Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Alex Nicolaitis, the webcast coordinator for Bioprocess International. So thank you for joining us today. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Sharon Bola, Global Product Manager, Process Chromatography from BioRad Laboratories. Hello, and uh, thanks a lot for the introduction. Today I'll be speaking about downstream process development for the purification of biosimilar insulin from E. coli. Um, just some quick background before we go into the experiments. When there's not enough insulin, the blood glucose levels rise and you get diabetes. So therefore, there's a great need for economical insulin production in developing and non-developing countries. This is a typical workflow for recombinant human insulin expressed in E. coli. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of all the steps because we're just going to focus on the chromatography. But uh, very briefly, uh, ZZ Pro Insulin was cloned, expressed, and produced in E. coli as inclusion bodies and then harvested. Um, the ZZ Pro Insulin inclusion body prep steps include solubilization, sulfatolysis, concentration, and destalting. And then pro insulin is isolated via capture chromatography and refolding an enzymatic cleavage of pro insulin to remove the C peptide and ZZ tail to obtain insulin. And then insulin is purified via intermediate chromatography. So in the middle of the screen, you could see that the insulin is composed of the A and B chain after enzymatic cleavage. And the insulin is 51 amino acids. Uh, the A chain is 21 amino acids long and the B chain is 30 amino acids. And the molecular weight is 50, around 5,800 Daltons. Let's talk about the pro-insulin purification. Cation exchange resins are commonly used in pro-insulin purification because of their high binding capacity and high flexibility in scaling up. Um, three resins were chosen for this evaluation, including um, Nuvia S, Unisphere S, and Nuvia C prime and high-throughput screening was done on four-site 20 microliter 96-well plates to evaluate the binding capacity, uh, determine optimal loading conditions, and to scout for elution conditions. The table uh, here lists the properties of each of the three resins. Here are some heat maps and we're looking at the effect of pH and conductivity on binding. Uh, we're looking at Nuvia S compared to Unisphere S compared to C prime. And Nuvia S had the highest binding capacity uh, and the buffer that was the optimal binding buffer was 50 millimolar citric acid, eight molar urea, one millimolar EDTA, uh, pH between 3.4 to 3.7 was selected as the binding buffer. The elution buffer scouting was also done on Nuvia S foresight plates. And we looked at a sodium citrate buffer system uh, evaluating different pHs and different sodium chloride concentrations. And percent yield increases as pH and sodium chloride concentration increases, but the purity decreases. So to find a balance between high yield and purity, uh, further elution optimization and verif 
verification was carried out on Nuvia S in a column format. These are the final optimized conditions for the proinsulin purification. Uh, binding and wash uh, was 50 millimolar citric acid, 8 molar urea, 1 millimolar EDTA at pH 3.4. And the elution buffer uh, was pH 5. Um, initially, uh, a salt gradient was tried, but a pH step elution was better suited to remove other protein impurities. And all the proinsulin comes out in a single pH step at pH 5. And recovery was 96% by HPLC, and the eluit purity was found to be 81%. Here you're looking at the non-reducing SDS page and western blot of the load eluid and strip fractions. Um, and as you can see, uh, the Nuvia S does a really good job of cleaning up the proinsulin and the purity is significantly enhanced after Nuvia S chromatography. So in summary, uh, Nuvia S, Unisphere S, and Nuvia C prime were screened to capture the proinsulin. And the best binding capacity was achieved with Nuvia S using 50 millimolar citric acid, 8 molar urea, 1 millimolar EDTA, pH 3.4. And the column elution with the sodium citrate buffer at pH 5 uh, gave a high recovery of 96% and a high purity of 81%. Moving on to the refolded insulin purification. Uh, again, this is an intermediate purification step of insulin following the cleavage of proinsulin. And uh, this was done on 96 well foresight prepacked plates and 0.5 mil columns were used to develop optimized conditions for the purification of cleaved insulin. These are the three resins that were screened on Foresight 96 well plates. Um, both the Nuvia HRS and the Macroprop S are strong cation exchange and the Nuvia C prime is a weak hydrophobic uh, cation exchange. Each of the three resins were evaluated for their binding capacity for insulin at a range of between 0 to 200 millimolar sodium chloride and ethanol 0 to 30 percent in acetic acid buffer. Um, Nuvia HRS demonstrated the highest binding capacity for insulin and the highest binding capacity occurred at 100 millimolar sodium chloride in the absence of ethanol. So Nuvia HRS was chosen for the insulin capture step and the optimal binding condition was then used in bulk purification. For elution condition scouting, uh, buffers were evaluated in the range of 30 to 50% ethanol and 100 to 450 millimolar sodium chloride in acetic acid buffer at pH 4. And the yield of insulin increased with increasing ethanol percentages and increasing sodium chloride concentrations. And the highest purity was achieved at 50% ethanol and low sodium chloride concentrations. And to find a balance between high yield and purity, further elution optimization and verification was done with Nuvia HRS in a column format. These are the final purification conditions for insulin. A two-step elution at pH 4 was developed. The binding and wash buffer was 50 millimolar acetic acid, 100 millimolar sodium chloride, pH 4. The first elution buffer 
was 50 millimolar acetic acid, 10% ethanol, 270 millimolar sodium chloride. And the second elution buffer was 50 millimolar acetic acid, 35% ethanol, 730 millimolar sodium chloride. And during the binding wash, there's no insulin detected in the flow through. And then during the first elution step, um, the high molecular weight cleavage products are eluted. And 90% of these were removed. The insulin, as you can see, is eluted at a, as a sharp peak. And the eluted insulin um, had a high uh, purity, which was 93%, and the recovery was 77%, which is a significant improvement from the original material purity that was 42%. This is the gel, and as you could see, the HRS does a really, really good job in cleaning up the insulin from cleavage impurities. The purity was 77%, and the yield was 93%. So to summarize the insulin purification on Nuvia HRS, um, the highest binding capacity uh, was found to be with 50 millimolar acetic acid, 100 millimolar sodium chloride, um, pH 4 as the binding buffer. And elution with acetic acid and ethanol at pH 4 achieved good recovery, 77% and excellent purity, 93%. And the Nuvia HRS does a really good job at removing closely related molecular weight contaminants. Um, Proinsulin is about 9 kilodaltons, and the ZZ tail is about 13 kilodaltons. So these are the overall results. For the ZZ Pro Insulin purification on Nuvia S, the step yield was 96% and the purity was 81%. And for the purification of insulin with Nuvia HRS, the step yield was 77% and the purity was 93%. Um, just as a note, um, a final polishing reverse phase HPLC step was done to get uh, material comparable to a reference standard. And for more details, please be sure to check out the publication by our collaborators at Bioprocessing Technology Institute, who we thank very, very much for their work. I'd like to thank everyone for their time and attention today, and we're just like you to check out our online resources uh, where you can request samples and our specialists can be reached by emailing or completing the form online. And with that, I am happy to take questions now. Okay, great. And as a reminder to our audience, you can go ahead and type in your questions for our speaker now. So our first question is, has affinity chromatography been used for pro-insulin purification? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, yes, affinity chromatography has been used in the past, but um, affinity chromatography can be expensive. And um, so we thought that the process scale-up could be more economical with CIEX. And we were also able to get a higher recovery and purity compared to reported processes using affinity chromatography. Are you able to use two cat cation exchange steps in bind and elute since they are not orthogonal? Uh, yes. So while you typically look for orthogonal steps, um, in this case, uh, there's a difference in the starting material for each of the steps. So in the first case, uh, you're purifying pro-insulin, and in the second, it's a post-cleavage insulin, so they're targeting uh, different impurities. So that's why we used uh, two cation exchange steps. 
And what are the benefits of using the cation exchange resin for insulin? Yeah, so um, we found Nuvia HRS was really good at resolving closely related products. Um, this resin has a smaller particle size, which could be used for intermediate polishing. And uh, so it was able to remove cleavage products like proinsulin and the ZZ tail, uh, which have PIs that are really close to insulin around um, 5.3. Okay, so it looks like we're running a bit short on time. So if we don't get to your question, we'll be passing them along to Sharon who can follow up with you directly. Please go ahead and continue to type in any questions you have and we'll get those passed along. The last question for the webcast is, why was ethanol used during insulin purification? Yeah, that's a really good uh, question as well. Um, so ethanol was used to increase the stability and solubility of insulin. Uh, insulin, it's hydrophobic and it's stable in organic solvents. Um, it's also uh, been known to decrease the elution volume and increase yield as per um, publications in the past. All right, well, thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Alex, and thanks to all our viewers. Um, if there's anything that uh, you have further questions about, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thanks again. And thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be made available for on-demand viewing on our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye. <music>